Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I can grab a different mic if that'd be better. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you so much. That's a little bit better, ain't it? Amen. But uh, scripture text today is going to be coming out of John 7 and 37. Scripture text today will be coming out of John 7 and 37. And in the last day, that great day of the feast... Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And in 39 it says, But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Look at your neighbor and say, it wasn't poured out yet. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, it's poured out now. Because that Jesus was not yet glorified. You may be seated. Hallelujah. This Friday, I had the opportunity to go to Barnes Jewish Hospital. That's in St. Louis. And uh, I have infusions every eight weeks. And so I went down there. My uncle traveled with me because he doesn't like me going on the roads by myself. And uh, so thank you, Brother Reed. Appreciate it much. Hallelujah. We'll go to the yellow mic. We'll give Lady Liberty to hear it with this yellow mic. If I turn it on, I hope I have a whole lot. There we go. Praise the Lord. Lord can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Free, 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 free. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I uh, went to St. Louis and uh, showed up. And on an infusion, they got a, they got a main line. You, they find us some vein, and they give you a main line hookup. Okay? And uh, she's, she's trying. She get me sitting down there. She takes the blood pressure. You know, there's a routine, Sister Pope. When you show up, I, I know the routine. I've been going for five years. I know the routine. I sit down in that little comfy chair there, put that one arm out there so they can get the blood pressure. And the blood pressure reading on the first is just always going to be a little higher because we just walked back there, right? And so she takes the blood pressure, and then she says, well, she said, we're supposed to take blood this time. Okay, it's a blood draw. Every other time is a blood draw. And so they can tell so much from your blood. It's amazing what they can tell out of your blood. That, isn't that just amazing? They know all the stuff that's kind of going on in your body through that little liquid that comes in that little vacuum tube that they get out of you. And so she's going to try to hook up the, that, uh, that, that little needle inside of there so she can get me started. And wouldn't you know it, she tried a new area. Because they normally, they normally nail me right here. Okay? And they, they tried right here. And boy, she went to jabbing and poking, poking and jabbing, jabbing and poking. <laughs> and kept looking at me and saying, does this hurt? I said, really, it don't hurt. But, you know, I was starting to feel the blood come out of my face. And all of a sudden, I'm getting real hot, and my vision is starting to get, I got black, then I get vision. I got black, I got vision. And I leaned over, just as nice as I could, because you try to be polite, even though you're getting ready to pass out. I says, ma'am, I said, in case I drop out, I said, I'm about to go bye-bye. She says, she says, well, we're going to stop right now. She's going to get your feet up. We're going to get a fan on you, brought a cold rag. In, in a matter of three minutes, I was back to normal. But the part I didn't like was that being out at Abbey normal, and now having no control, nobody likes it. Pastor, remember when you was on that medication? 
and it started doing some things that you didn't have control of. And then when you get in that place, you, just, you don't like it. Because, see, in my, in my prideful self, men don't faint, okay? And this is the second time I've been there that I almost fainted. I think, I think what it is, I don't know if there's anything medical to this, but I'm watching them do the old stab and poke. Maybe if I was to look away, I'm not sure if that's it, you know, because it wasn't hurting, you know, but it just, it just got me. And I said to myself, you, you big sissy. You know how we talk to ourselves. Men talk to themselves, you know. You, you're going to push through this, son, okay, boy. You're going to push through this. But I wasn't doing a very good job pushing. <laughs> I, was, I was yielding to what had me. But why I share that is this, is see, hydration is so important. And I didn't know that you can actually faint because of your lack of hydration in you. Okay? No, no clue about that. Didn't even know that. So I was sharing that with Sister Coger and, and the rest as I was coming today, and she said, oh, I drink you know, four bottles of water before I go to the doctor. See, I'm learning, Pastor. I'm almost 52 years old. I'm learning. Okay? But I had to share that with you because the last three days' events have led to this message. How many people in here know that he'll allow you to live it before you get a chance to preach it? He don't like those tell-alls that hasn't been all, okay? He, you know, hey, they're about as shallow as a puddle on the sidewalk, okay? And so we're going to turn to John today, and this is what... The message is all about, this is the meat and potatoes. We're going to go to John 4 and 5. If we can bring up John 4 and 5 on the screen back here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then cometh he to a city. The he is talking about Jesus. Of Samaria, which Samaria means the watchtower or the watch mountain. And this was an interesting fact I found out about Samaria. That it was actually... In 879 B.C., it was the capital or the heartbeat of the northern kingdom of Israel. I always thought Jerusalem was the heartbeat the entire time, but it wasn't. There was a heartbeat before Christ showed up on the scene, and which is called Shikar, which means the end, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Look at your neighbor and say he received an inheritance or a gift from his dad. Now, Jacob's well was there. Notice the well was not named Joseph's well. I'm, I'm about ready to wind up, okay? He, he, he had me tighter than a 12-day clock this morning on the little things and he, he takes them, just begins to unfold. Now, Jacob's well was there, but notice that the well was not named Joseph's well, but was still carrying the name of the one who paid for it. Jacob's well, not Joseph's well. Jesus, therefore, being wearied in his journey, he sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. And the sixth hour is a beholding hour. In John 19 and 14, which I think I forgot to give the dear brother back there, and it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, and I believe this might have been Pilate, Behold your king. There's things that take place in the sixth hour. So when it says, hey, he sat on a well on the sixth hour, there's a, there's a, a behold your king, there's a proclamation being made here because of the hour of the day. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away. Now sometimes you need to get a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody. So Jesus takes this opportunity because, see, even when the disciples come back a little farther on and they can't believe who he's talking to, he understood that this is a conversation I need to have with this woman at this time and this moment while the rest are away. So sometimes you need to speak to someone by themselves unto the city to buy meat. And then the woman of Samaria said unto him, How is it 
that thou being a Jew, now I'm going to question, I don't know this for sure, but there was, must have been something about his speech or his language, or there must have been something he was wearing that said, I'm a Jew, right? I'm not sure. I didn't, I didn't go into the depths of that, but she already identified him real quick like as a Jew. Ask it, drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. See, filled Christians say, I'm filled. One more time. I'm filled. Okay. They don't have walls or boundaries. All they know is the Father's love, which has no boundaries. See, he, he wasn't limited to who and what he could share with somebody. He didn't have the, the racial stuff going on. He didn't have the, I was, I was born with a lot of money and you was poor. Okay? All the boundaries. Look, hey, just raise your hand and say, thank you for no boundaries. Thank you, Lord, for no boundaries. Amen. Hallelujah. In 4 and 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Everybody say living water. Living water. A matter of fact, I forgot to mention this. It was on the very first page there. The message today is the hydration of living water. The hydration of living water. And the woman saith unto him in verse 11, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence hast thou that living water? She's looking in those natural eyes and saying, You know what? You didn't bring the goods, buddy. You're asking for something you can't even obtain yourself. How many times have you ever gone into prayer with God? And you want to have the faith to believe him for it, but you don't quite see him accomplishing it. Anybody? I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I've been there before. To, I, I look at him and say, you, you didn't bring to draw with, buddy. But he, hey, he is more than able. Say, he's more than able. Okay. Hallelujah. Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Now, this, is, this was crazy. She believes she's covenant qualified. She said, our father Jacob, right there. That's a Samaritan woman, right? She said, you think that you're greater than our father Jacob? She believes see, she's covenant qualified, even though the rest of them that's in the covenant won't qualify her. Hallelujah. This was a covenant well for all to draw from. Now, if it's a Jewish well, why is a Samaritan woman drawn from a well that wasn't even dug for Samaritan folks? Look at your neighbor and say, community well. No boundaries. No boundaries. It was a covenant well for all to draw from, which gave us the well. And we, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whomsoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whoever drinketh of the water I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, she keep calling him sir. She still ain't got an identity of who this guy is in front of her yet. She's, she just wants to be polite. Sir, give me this water. Now, she's starting to believe his words here because you're not going to ask for something that you don't believe somebody can't give you, right? Sister Booker, I'm not going to ask you for a million dollars if I don't think you can't produce it, right? I'll talk to you after the service. Hallelujah. She said, sir, give me this water. She was saying in herself, I believe you. I believe what you're saying. That I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Look at your neighbor and tell them, here comes the spin. Here comes the spin. Okay? 
Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and in that sayest thou truly. Now today I was going to get into, this is what got me all started on this, was the six husbands. I was going to ask the Lord to name those six husbands. But he said, no. He said, that's homework today. He said, tell them today. And he said, and I will, I will answer thee on this one. Ask him the name of those six husbands. Because it ain't names of men. It's names of things that holds us back. Things that can't quite complete us. Things that have been unsatisfactory in our life. Those are the six husbands, the five she was with and the one she was with now. So that's the homework today. Figure out those names. Come back, let me know. I'd like to know it. It says right here, the woman saith unto him, Sir, she's got that sir stuff going down. She said it in 11. She said it in 15. Now she said it in 19. She's got all the mannerisms going. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. See, her perception of who Jesus was was beginning to rise up. I've been in this probably 24 years, and my perception is beginning to rise up. I'm beginning to see him for who he is each and every day. Each and every week, he's becoming new to me, okay? I'm not just seeing him as a provider. I'm not just seeing him as a healer. I'm seeing him in ways that I'm seeing him as someone that can, he can take a break, break a vessel and then break it again and break it again. And, break, and when you think that you're down to the smallest little piece, he can just keep crumbling that piece, getting every ounce of you out of you so you can receive all of him. And you'll say, all of him? Yeah, because, see, we interfere. We are that, the muddy in the waters, okay? And so when he gets all of you consumed, and you'll say, doesn't, doesn't that hurt? It does, but it doesn't. He'll take you to a place to where you're a, you're a pile on the floor and you, you think that you don't even have no more tears left in your body. And then from the bottoms, he, he, he wells up that well again. He says, he says I'm, I'm rehydrating you. I'm rehydrating you right now. You're a little dehydrated, Brother Thorn. I'm hydrating you right now. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But her perception of Jesus was beginning to rise up in verse 20. Our fathers, see, here it is. Our fathers. She's throwing herself into a midst of something that the rest of the people say, you don't belong. Do you hear her language in that? She's talking like she might be covenant covered. Our fathers. These are her words. Worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. Ye know what we, what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers, I'm going, I'm going to take a selah moment here, the true worshipers, the hydrated, completely overfilling worshipers will worship, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus saith unto her, here's the bomb moment. Here's, here's the part that all of a sudden it's just going to get real, real for this woman. I that speak unto thee am he. 
And upon this came his disciples. I don't care where you're at. Anytime you get a spiritual move, there's going to be something that tries to shut her down. And here comes, here comes the disciples, the chosen ones. <laughs> the chosen ones. Hallelujah. And upon this came his disciples, and they marveled that he talked with this woman. Don't Jesus know we got boundaries? We got walls. We've got things that are set up in our society that says they stay there, we stay here, done deal. Okay? Come on, preach. Hallelujah. They marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said. It's that secret stuff. And see, this is what God really loves to deal with, is the things that you don't confess out, you don't say, but they're hid right in here. He just, he just massages that heart, begins to squeeze just a little bit there, and he begins to just let you know that I'd like to get something out of there if you'll let me. You know, I would love to take what you don't want to speak out loud and let it not even have to be known. Why don't we just let this be our little secret? Why don't we just let this be our secret that I healed you from something that nobody even knew that you was suffering from? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. It says right here that the disciples came and they marveled that, they, that he talked with that woman, yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? Let me tell you why he spoke to her. Because he's full. See, I found out that a full Christian, an overflowing Christian, they don't get the choice of who they speak to and who they don't speak to. Because you're led of the Father. And the Father makes that choice for you. You'll walk past somebody that is just, that's aching inside. And not even telling you that they're aching inside. And God will, he'll stop you right in your tracks. He'll stop you right in your tracks. You'll be getting changed back from a cashier. Okay? And all of a sudden, God starts talking to you about something going on in their life and the pain and the suffering that they're going through and allows you to feel that. Okay? Jesus was full. He was full of the Father. The woman then left her water pot and went on her way into the city and saith unto the men. See, she's having a lighten the ship moment when things that was important are cast aside. And beholding and proclaiming and becoming. She got to live these three things. She got to behold what was before her and said, this ain't just a sir, a three-letter word. This guy right here is more than just a prophet. This guy right here knows me. Now, it's one thing to, to sit under some teaching that just kind of hits the generalizations. But it's the other thing when you get under the, the preaching and the teaching of the anointed word, and it finds you. Especially when you're trying to hide, it finds you. It goes around those corners. And it finds you right where you're at. And it lets you know that love has sought you out. Love will find you. you. Hey, I challenge you today, hide from love. Tell me who wins that game. But a beholding and proclaiming and becoming, verse 29, come see a man. Come see a man which told me all things ever I did, is not this the Christ? Friend, she's having a day. She knew that she could be under this covenant umbrella with her language, even though her actions didn't really display it. She was drawing water out of a well. Community well had a name of a guy with a good covenant. And then they went out of the city and came unto him. Now yesterday morning, I had a little visitation. I ain't going to say it's a little one. It was a big visitation. I get up about my normal routine. How many know 
with just a raising your hand that God can change your routine. I'm about my business, and all of a sudden, I begin to just kind of weep. And I thought it was, see, a friend of mine had passed away this past Friday, and a good friend of mine, Terry, he had passed away, and I thought, well, maybe I'm feeling sorry for Terry, okay, and the family, okay? You know how it is. We try to figure out things, you know. You know, women, when they're pregnant, they'll cry for no reason. Anybody, anybody know that pregnant women do that stuff? Okay? So I'm, I'm there crying, and I'm trying to put a finger on the pulse of what the crying's about. And then he turns the dial up. And I'm, man, I'm, I'm from the guts. I can't breathe. I, I can't, I can't come I can't gain my composure. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, you're thinking to yourself, well, are you going into an intercession? Are you interceding for somebody's behalf? But what he shared with me was this. He said, I want you to be filled. And he said, I want you to be overflowing. And I want you to not be dehydrated of me. Because, see, there's, there's signs and symptoms of dehydration. No more tears for people that are dehydrated. They can't cry. They got real dry mouth. No water can flow out their mouth. Real dry mouth. These are signs and symptoms of people that are dehydrated. Okay? And you can die of dehydration. Hallelujah. But I felt for a moment the grief of the woman who lost her husband. And I'm telling you straight up, I don't know if it's, if it's like that on a lot of visitations that you do. I had the opportunity to actually minister during the uh, funeral. I had the opportunity to minister to in the funeral. And before that, I just wept like this guy's my own dad. And I'm still not understanding. I'm still trying to find a pulse. Anybody ever try to find the pulse of God? And you're saying, what's going on, buddy? Why is this going on? And all he was letting me know was this. I want you to be so hydrated that you don't have a choice to be hydrated. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Anybody in here like losing your composure to where you lose face, you get the uglies, okay? Get the little bit of the stuff going down the lip right here. Nasal passages begin to drain. It isn't what you call a real pretty time, is it? And you like that to be in, on your time, your personal time. Is that correct? But see that being full all the time and overflowing? What if that overflowing spills onto others to bless them in such a way that by you getting ugly, they got healed? By you having to just get rid of all the pride because that's the real reason why we don't want to get ugly, right? You know, and it's that nasty pride, Brother Pope, man. And you'll say, Brother Thorne, surely you've weeded all that out of your garden. <laughs> not so, not so, not so, not so. I want it going out of my garden. It seems to zap up all the hydration. So I'm weeping on the floor, not understanding what's going on. And he's just letting me know that to be overfilled with his living water, to be hydrated with his living water. In John 11 and 35, Jesus wept, and it gained a new meaning to me. See, I always thought that, you know, Jesus was weeping because of Lazarus. You know, his, his buddy died. But that really don't make sense because, see, he knows he's going there to raise Lazarus up. But he could feel the grief that his sisters were feeling. Okay? He feels all those pains. And we say that as a generic thing, that Jesus feels what I'm going through. But man, he does. He really, really feels it. He really knows what you're going through, and it ain't a cliche. And he allowed me to experience that because when I got up in front of all those people, and Brother Tyler and I was doing good. I was dry-eyed, not a tear coming out. I got this whooped. He turned that dial. When he, 
when he turned that dial, the waterworks, I'm talking the boo-hoos, the uglies. I, I turn around, got my little hanky in hand. I turn around, because you, you don't want nobody to see you during those times. I turn around, and I said, we got this. Take the deep breath. All those speaking things that they try to teach you, I guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a good speaker. So I would, I, would, I would go back into the harness. I'm ready to be harnessed up again, okay, Lord? And then all of a sudden, here it comes again. And you take that step back again. And you're saying, don't you understand that I've got to say something? And he says, don't you understand that I want overflowing? I don't care what words comes out. I want to minister to beyond you, Brother Thornton. Okay? That's new arena for me. I'll be honest. I'm not used to that arena. You get done, and you stand there, and you think to yourself, complete failure right here. You know, these people wanted me to say some nice things and some positive things, and I couldn't even hardly get out anything without being a blubbering idiot, okay? And would you know, here's the part. The, the mother, the wife, excuse me, came up to me, just, just crying. And she says, you did wonderful. She said, I couldn't have asked for anything more. And I'm thinking, did she just hear what I heard? But see, God, he's a filter. Raise your hand and say, thank you for the filter. Thank you for the filter. Yes. He takes all of what you think happened and he filters it and all they can grab a hold of is him through that filter. Does that make any sense to anybody? You'll say, man, I failed miserably. And he looks at the situation and says, you did everything you were supposed to do. All from just being broken in front of others. And you'll say to yourself, is it really that important to let him break us? I don't know of anything else in this lifetime that accomplishes so more in such little amount of time. You can start the day off bad, and all of a sudden when he touches you, and all of a sudden you, you're a mess, and then all of a sudden your, your whole perspective, your outlet, you don't see him as a sir, you don't see him as a prophet, you see him as God Almighty. You understand him for who he is in your life, and you begin to understand the covenant that you're in. You understand that the Father's name is on my life. I'm drinking from a well that has his name on it, not my own. Mm. Hallelujah. But it gained new meaning that here Lazarus, he was dead, but Jesus felt the pain of all those people that was involved with Lazarus's life. That hurt, that pain, and that grief, he could actually feel that. And I never knew that. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm going to bring it to a close here pretty quick, folks. But I wanted to, I just wanted to share with you that, matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to bring her down. Pastor, I'm going to bring her down. In John 19 and 28, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. He had emptied himself out for a finished work and said, I thirst. Yet was this man the fullest man that ever walked on two feet. And he says, I thirst. I got to believe this, that there is a hydration that God wants us to be a part of that's an everyday experience I believe that the times he wants to use you to reach those people around you are the times when you need to be full overflowing you'll say well brother Thornton the cares of this life just seems to zap it all out of me that's when you're going to have to get beside yourself 
and get with him and get a rehydration. Ask him to rehydrate you. Ask him to touch you. Ask him to love on you one more time. I wish I could, I could say the right things to you that would make you believe everything that was said today, but I can tell you this. You're part of a covenant that's greater than you are, and there's no walls. There, the love has not allowed any walls to come up before you and your maker. Pride might. Let's stand, please. I want to close with a prayer. And the prayer is this. Father, I thank you for all those that you've allowed to come today. I thank you for giving me this message, even though it was kind of short and hopefully to the point. But I'm asking today, pour out your hydration. Pour out that others may taste of this living water. Because now that you have been glorified, your pouring out is from everlasting to everlasting to everlasting. Thank you for not being a limited God. Thank you for not being limited in your ability to pour out onto us. I thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity. I thank you for this day. Please bless each and every one of them in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 God richly bless you today.